So in the previous episode, we learned a lot about what the stats are, a general example of what they do, and how the stats of the actors and the enemies interact with each other during a battle. Now in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the skills and the more deeper aspects of what you can manipulate for each skill. So let's get straight into it. To start off, to add more skills, let's just change the maximum from 10 to maybe 13. Hit OK. Now I've got three more slots to add skills. So let's just copy one of the previous existing skills by going onto it, hitting Control C, then going onto a blank spot, hitting Control V, and I'll just paste the skill on there. Now let's get straight into what we want to do. Let's try creating an ice skill that hits multiple enemies. So let's do it. First, we'll do it ice as its name. Next, we'll do an icon. We can just find some ice icon within all these lists of icons. So we'll choose this one right here. We can make a description. So this is a magic skill that damages all the enemies. Oops, I messed up damages. There we go right there. So next, we'll give it a skill type of magic as opposed to special. Now, the difference between magic and special are those are two different like sections of skills. You can make more of your own custom sections later, but for the time being, just focus on making all your skills magic for like a magic skill or special for some like physical or like really powerful skill or whatever. So we'll just do magic for now. We of course have the MP cost, which is going to be how much MP it takes away from you. And we also have something called a TP cost. Now TP was not really discussed in the previous video because TP is sort of a unique sort of alternative to MP. Now when TP is used, it always has a maximum of 100. And when you use a skill or something, you actually gain TP. And when your TP bar is full or it has lots of TP, you can use that TP on various skills. It's a somewhat different sort of system. For the time being, don't worry about it. We'll just continue onward. So next, we'll set the scope. Now the scope, of course, is going to be what type of person it hits. It can hit one enemy, all enemies, a random assortment of enemies, an ally, all the allies, a dead ally, all the dead allies, or the user itself. So the goal of this one is to damage all the enemies. So let's click all enemies. Now this skill will affect all the enemies. Next comes the occasion. Now the occasion should be pretty self-explanatory. We either have always, which is going to be on the battle screen or menu screen, battle screen, menu screen, or never. So occasionally you may have a healing skill you want to have usable on the menu screen and the battle screen so you can heal outside of battle and in battles. So you set this to always. But for an offensive skill like ice, you're going to have to set it something like battle because that's really the only place you're going to use it in. So let's click on battle screen for now. We also do a speed. This is how much speed is going to be added on to the user when they use this skill. So they can get a higher tier of speed when they're using this specific skill. For once again, let's just set it to zero. Leave that to default. Success rate, how successful it's going to be. We'll set to 100, but you can set it to lower to have a less successful skill. Repeat. This is going to be when the user uses the skill, how often will it repeat? This literally means when you use the ice skill, it'll do this entire thing twice if you set this to two. If you set it to 4, we're going to repeat this skill 4 times in a row when the user uses this skill. But for a normal skill, you're going to want to do this to 1 to have it repeat 1 time. We also have the TP game, which we recalled earlier is the thing that lets us add TP when we use this skill. Let's leave it at a 10 because we want to gain 10 TP when using this boring skill. Hit type, magic or physical or certain. And in RPG Maker MV, you're stuck with 3 hit types. A certain hit, which is a hit that's always going to hit. A physical attack, which is going to be affected by physical evasion, or a magical attack, which is going to be affected by magical evasion. Once again, that's something you don't want to worry about right now. Just set it to magical to correspond with a skill type and continue onward. Next, we have probably the most important, which is the animation. This is what's going to be shown on screen when the attack is used. Now we're going to open it up and see, oh man, look at all these crazy lists of all this stuff. How do we even know what these look like? And the answer is, you go over to the animations tab right here, and you can see the entire list listed down here. We can go to one we want to check out, say, Power Down 1. With the play right here, and it'll play the entire animation on this dragon. So let's say we want to find one for ice, so we do something right about, here we go, ice all one. Click on that, we can play and see, alright, that's a skill that does ice one on all of all the enemies. Blah, blah, blah. So let's go to skills, let's set ice all one to our animation so we should find it right about here it is oops wow that was weird oh whoa something's messed up oh this is an awkward time to do a tutorial come on please work well okay that's not working guess we'll have to scroll here we go ice one all right ice all right here what was i thinking okay ice all one next comes the message 
So this can be a message that plays when the user uses the skill. So for example, this will say casts ice when the user uses cast ice. So if the user is Bob, it'll say Bob casts ice. You can also set it to does, you can set it to uses. You can also just customize yourself by saying, does the skill of ice or whatever. Or alternatively, instead of using this box up here, you just go down here and customize the entire message by yourself. So there was an ice attack storm thingy used. And that's what it does. Finally, at the bottom comes the required weapons, and you can set certain weapon types to be required to use a skill. Once again, don't worry about this. We'll, we'll get into it later when we do weapons. But for example, if you want to make sure the user had to have like a gun to use the ice skill, you just select gun and boom, you have to have a gun type weapon before they can use the skill. Now, up here is a damage box. We went over this before, but it should be self-explanatory. You can set a type to make it so it does HP damage, MP damage, recovers HP, recovers MP, or it drains HP and it drains MP. So we're gonna do a very simple HP damage. Then we can set a formula, and the result of this formula will be how much damage is done to the HP. And you're given a lot of options for what you can do. The variable A right here represents the attacker, and B represents the defender. So if we did A dot attack, that'd be at the attacker's attack. If we did something like B dot MDF, that'd be the defender's magic defense. So if we look, if we just go in here and we highlight the entire thing and just wait a bit, so wait about now, you'll see a list of everything we can use. Attack, magic attack, agility, max HP, HP, TP, MP, level, etc. So we did something like A dot level plus A dot magic attack minus B dot magic defense plus 10. This will give us a formula that will give us a result pretty much. The attacker's level, plus their magic attack, minus the user's defense, magic defense, plus 10. And finally, we also make sure the element is set to ice. This is so we can have like certain effects when a certain element is used. Once again, we'll worry about that later. We have a variance. This means there'll be like a small variance in between the actual damage and what the damage is given. So it could be plus 20%, minus 20%, and anything in between. So worry about that once again, that's pretty self-explanatory. Critical hits, yes or no. You want critical usable on this skill, we'll say yes for now. Now we also have effects and notes. We're not gonna worry about these at all, they're way too complex for now. Ex for this example, let's just go on to the second thing, which is the items. Now, items are similar to skills. As you may be able to tell, they also have like a damage box, the same type of usage, the same indication, all that stuff. But instead of sk having skills, items are like specific items you can hold, while well, skills are usually connected to an actor for them to use. So you should probably already get the idea if you played any normal RPG, but for the most part, Let's just create a quick item, just to go another example. So we'll create a super potion or whatever. Well, you could set an icon to be this heart thing right here. Is a super potion. Was we'll it the item type to regular item? The key item or hidden item A and B can be used to set it so it's in the key item section or it's hidden from the inventory. So we'll do regular item. The price is going to be affected by if it gets sold in the shop. So make sure if it is sold in the shop, it'll cost 25 gold. Is it consumable? This means it's, if it's used, will it just be lost? And the answer is yes. If we set it to no, that means this item can be used over and over and over again without it ever being removed from the inventory. But we'll set it to yes so it can be removed once it's used. The scope, which we already explained, is going to set it to which one it's going to be used on. It's going to be used on an ally. It can be used in both the menu and the battle screen. So always speed, success, repeat, TP gain. We know all this. Hit type. We can once again set the certain to hit since we always want to hit. The animation. We can set it so this item has a certain animation when used in the battle. So we'll set it to, um, there should be a heal thing in here. So yeah, heal one. We'll do that. Damage box. We could or could not put something in here. We could do like HP recover and set it so it recovers 100 HP. Set to no element, give it a variance of 20, no critical hits, and that's what our super potion is going to do. And that's pretty much all there is really for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to go through how I can actually obtain the skills and the items inside our own game, then use them in battle. Sorry for this tutorial being very sort of bland, boring, just stay, wait, wait for next tutorial. We'll get into the interesting stuff and how to actually make our actors use these skills, use these items, destroy the enemies in the battles, RPG Maker Tutorial End.